Well, school is back, and so is our Professor of Education from the University of Newcastle, John Fischetti, who's also back from the 35-degree heat back in his homeland, mate. How are, you, how, are you adjusting back to the normal time of the year? A little bit shocking, but the Northern Hemisphere is on fire, Mark. Yeah, well, 35. Look, I'm not a big fan of that when we get that, which won't be too far away. But look, we complain about the weather no matter what it is. Yep. It's, it's never right. I'm quite happy with it like this. With uh, school back, I, I kind of mentioned a few minutes ago, parents are probably firing on 120% at the moment. <laughs> what to do if the kids aren't necessarily back into the thrill and the, the swing of things? Yeah, well, Mark, this is the first time in three years that we've had, and I'm putting air quotes around the word normal, mm -hmm. a normal school year, which started on time without any lockdowns or without any worries. And we've been trying to get through to this point of the year. But the dog days of the year here and now, it's a long time to December. And if a child isn't really their best self right now, what are the options for a parent? Because we got a whole bunch of days till Christmas. And you also have to account, too, that there are kids that have had a couple of years of school behind them now without having a full school exactly. year. So they've gone into school being school light, L-I-T-E, if you will, and now, oh, now, it's, now it's full on. So yep. what are some of the, the issues? How do we recognize them? And what do we do about them? Well, some of the issues are profound enough that you should check with your GP and any specialist your child might have. I'm going to talk about those day-to-day -day issues that most parents who have just dropped their kid off at school or just hoping today can be a good day. So let's put the, the low-hanging fruit. Okay. Sometimes the issue has been during the last couple of years, kids just haven't had proper sleep. You're talking about that a bit later, about how sleep deprivation can cause us to be stressful or distress causes sleep. But a lot of young people have screens on till way too late in the evening. Those screens, if you've been interacting with them 20 minutes before sleep, those create the inability of our brains to detach and go into deep sleep, that REM uh, sleep that we need to be able to, to go into kind of use sleep as relaxation. Um, so my suggestion is double check that your child's actually going to sleep on time and that they're getting the proper sleep. That could even be with a new pillow. It could even be some kids have outgrown the mattress that they're on and some easy things. Also what they're eating close to bedtime, too much sugar or spicy foods can mean your body's not relaxing. It's oh, taking attack on spicy foods No, it's now. not an attack. Oh. You just do them a little earlier. You can still spice away, Mark, <laughs> cool. but maybe not after seven. Um, and so much of those things we can mm. take care of. So diet has so much in effect because a child who's well rested will have a good day the next day, just as an athlete really needs that. Sometimes it's much more than that. Uh, have you been to the dentist lately? I don't know if you remember like for older kids when their wisdom teeth were coming in, how there's an ache in your skull almost and you don't wonder what's happening to your brain. Or for younger children when their permanent teeth are coming in, they just might be having that normal phase where a dentist can just advise, hey, here's what's happening. And then you can medicate that or just know it's okay. A lot of kids, because their families have dropped their supplemental care, just haven't been to the dentist in a while. Mm. Or eye care to just make sure that the reason they're not seeing the screen or seeing the board is just a slight tweak away. So we got to take care of those things and not leave them till tomorrow because children's success will be based on their ability to interact during the school day and be able to not feel in pain. You, you talked, John, about some of the, the easy ones, and you'd kind of dealt with what may appear to be the easy one first, which was screens. However, if you've had kids that have just uh, gone into the school experience in the last couple of years, there's been more on screens yeah. than there would have been. So that has become more the norm than probably would have been expected, even though screens are, you know, more, more screens, less blackboard. So we're really talking about breaking a lot of pretty much entrenched habits now. Absolutely. And you combine that with the sleep too. Absolutely, Mark. Well said. Mm. Moderating that screen time is most of it, but also knowing if we're interacting with it, that we're doing it properly. Our eyes are okay. Our, our, we've, our teeth are okay. But actually, as school goes forward, it does get harder. The content as it gets more difficult might be that your child is struggling a bit just actually comprehending the content. Some kids need a little extra course in their reading ability. Some kids just need some extra math tutoring. I think if you know your child, you'll know if it's a developmental cycle or if it's something harder. Consult with your teacher. Teachers are there to give best advice. It could be, and this is where it gets a little harder, who they're associating with. Because in schools, there's little pockets of kids that are the studious ones next to the ones that are kind of playing up a little naughty and others who may just be zoned out. Helping your child make the decisions on who they're hanging out with will also help. If on the weekends, you're still running at 100%, putting everything out there and there's lots of sleepovers, make sure the work for the start of the week is done prior to those all-night 
pajama parties or whatever we'll call them uh, in that case because otherwise Sunday afternoon hits and you're then struggling to get everything back for the week. So try to knock out anything so the week starts with everything caught up. If parents are on top of it, consult with their teachers, do some of the smaller things and try to take back the week that it doesn't have to be an activity every night, that there could be a calm night or two in the week. Probably we'll get back on top of this. Spring will be here pretty soon. Yesterday and today's temperature show, it'll be coming. And then we'll get back into some more outdoor activity that will allow us to feel like life is back to whatever normal is going to be these days, Mark. And if you can also explain that, look, there is a ho- there is a school holiday. It's not that far yep. away. And uh, this is me being glass half full here, which does not happen very often. Yep. It really doesn't. That, look, hey, kids, by the time you get out into the real world a decade from now, you don't get as much time off as you do in school. So That's yeah, right. do the work, but you in, can enjoy a lot of that downtime, which, which will come, John. Absolutely. That's well said, Mark. All right, add that to the list. <laughs> there he is, our Professor of Education, uh, John Fischetti, who's back from his holiday. So maybe he's not 100% today on 2 and you are FM 103.7. A broadcast service of the University of Newcastle.